Good morning or good afternoon. Hope you're having a great day. Today in Israel, they remember and commemorate the six million people who were brutally murdered by the Nazis, the six million Jews and many, many more. Cities, shtetls, whole families, whole communities. How could we even remember all of them? But we promise not just to never forget, but to make sure their memory continues through the way we, lead, we live. And today in the morning in Israel, nearly 10 million people paused in the middle of whatever they were doing to remember for two minutes and to think about all these lives and what could have been and how our responsibility to them and to they, their lives that were taken so short. My own grandmother, parents, were a rabbi in a Rebetzin in Berdichev, where the Nazis came on a Shabbos, and they were killed by the Nazis on Shabbos. You know, in this week's Torah portion, we read about the passing of Nadav Va'avihu, two of Aaron's sons. And there's a fascinating midrash. The rabbis are perplexed of why they passed away. And there's many different opinions and commentaries. But there's a fascinating midrash that says that one day Nadav and Avi were walking behind their parents. Aaron and Moshe. And Nadav turns to Avi and says, Hey, Avi, when are these old people going to die and we could take over? And the Midrash says that God looked at them and said, we'll see who's going to die and who will bury who. And the rabbis tell us that when Job, the famous prophet Job, heard, the famous scholar Job, who was one of the devisers of Pharaoh, heard of this, he shuddered. And the rabbis wonder, why did, they sh why did he shudder? What was he so scared of? And of course, if you know the story of Job, Pharaoh had three advisors. One was Job, one was Bilam, and one was Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. And when Pharaoh planned to annihilate all the Jews, he gathered these three advisors and asked their opinion. Bilam said, absolutely kill and annihilate all the Jewish people. Jethro said no, and Job remained quiet, remained silent. Pharaoh, of course, of course took Bilam's opinion and he raised him to even higher status. Jethro had to flee for his life. And Job stayed the way he was. And the Midrash says of what happened to these people, Bilam was punished and was killed because of that. Jethro was awarded to become the father-in-law of Moses. And Job suffered tremendously when you read the book of Job and his suffering and all the challenges he had. And the rabbis say, that when Job heard the story of Nadav and Avihu, he shuddered, he trembled. You know why? Because he said, listen, I understand why Nadav was punished because of what he said about his father and his uncle. But what did Avihu do wrong? All he did was listen. He didn't say anything. He just happened to be there when Nadav spoke to him. And then he realized that the crime of Avihu was not what he said. It was what he didn't say. It was the silence. It was that he remained quiet while his brother said these words. And the Rebbe, in one of his talks, when he discussed this idea, the Rebbe spoke about how sometimes it's worse to remain silent than even than those who do the crimes. Because when we remain silent, we are an accessory and we are involved we are a reason for the crime. Think about the Holocaust and all those who remained silent and watched the murder of six million Jews and many, many more millions of people and remained silent. They might have not been part of the crime, but they really were. And that's a lesson we have to remember whenever we see injustice and crime and suffering. We should never, ever Remain silent. We always have to speak up. I saw this fascinating story today in a book called Hero of Our Faiths about this group of Polish Jews 
that were brought on a cattle cart to a death camp of the Nazis and they were all taken off and the Jews rummaged through the few things they were able to take and then they left all their belongings there and there was a group of Polish Gentiles who were watching and the Nazis in charge announced, listen, when these Jews leave, you can take whatever you want because they will never, ever see it again. Suddenly, these two Polish women, Gentiles, they saw a woman in the corner with a beautiful fur coat and not wanting to lose it before she would be taken away and someone else would take it. They knocked her down to the floor and they grabbed the coat from her. And they ran to a corner and they put the coat down, all excited to find the spoils. And as they dug in, they saw candelabra sticks, heirlooms, gold, silver. And they were starting divvying up the spoils. But then suddenly they saw something heavy. And they looked in and they found this little beautiful baby girl. And one of the Polish women says to her friend, you know, I'm already old. I don't have any children. I would love to have this child. You take the spoils and I'll take the child. And they agreed. And this Polish woman took this child home and nurtured her, gave her so much love. She was an intelligent girl. She went to school, she went to medical school, she became a big doctor, all the while never knowing her true story and who her true mother was. One day, when her mother passed away and people came to comfort her and to visit her, this old woman comes to visit her. And the old woman tells her the story of who her mother really was. She couldn't believe it. She said, how can it be? I never heard. My mother never told me anything. She says, I'll tell you what. I was the other woman with your mother. And when we found you, you had a gold necklace on you with a little charm with Hebrew letters. We couldn't understand what it was. But go check. And if you'll find it, you'll know I was right. Check your mom's possessions. And lo and behold, she checked her mom's possessions. And she saw it was there. And she recognized that she was Jewish. Shocked by this finding out something, a new identity she never realized she had. But she continued with her life. And one day she was visiting another country and she was on the streets and there were two Chabad boys and they were wrapping tefillin on the Jewish men and they were asking the Jewish woman to take upon them the mitzvah of Shabbat candles. And this woman came over to them and engaged them. She told them the story. She told them about the gold necklace which she started wearing every day and she showed it to them. The boys looked at it, they saw a name but they couldn't verify anything else. And they said, this is a remarkable story. Why don't you write to our mentor, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a blessed memory, then he was alive, and ask him what his opinion is. And she wrote her whole story in a letter, and speedily she got a response from the Rebbe about her being Jewish and recommending to her that she go to Israel where they needed doctors in the emergency rooms. They were short on doctors, and maybe she'll find her basher there. She ends up immigrating to Israel, and she becomes an emergency room doctor. And then in 2001, there was a terrible bombing that we can never forget, a suicide bombing in the Sabaro pizza shop. And people were being rushed to the hospital, injured in ways that were terrible. And there was this one grandfather who was frantically looking through all the patients to find his granddaughter crying. And this woman who was a doctor says, tell me how your granddaughter looks. And he says, listen, she has a very distinct necklace on her, a gold necklace, that's my granddaughter. And they looked and they found a search and they found this granddaughter of his. And suddenly the doctor froze, realizing that her necklace was identical. So she looks at this old man and says, tell me, where did you get this necklace? And he says, oh, this necklace you can't get anywhere. I was a goldsmith in Poland. And I made two of these for my daughters. One of them passed away and never survived the war. And the other one, this is her daughter who's wearing the necklace. And at that moment she realized that she was the daughter that they thought passed away. And 60 years later after the Nazis killed her mother, she was reunited with her father. The power of these heroic survivors. We have to remember to never forget. And we have to remember not just to never forget, but our actions and the way we act and the things we do and the positive actions we do perpetuate and bring to life these heroic people and continue the legacy of the Jewish people. Am Yisrael Chai, have a great day.